Hey everyone, Miko here and welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope everyone's doing their part in helping isolating the virus. So if you're at home watching this right now, then good for you, right? In this episode, we're gonna talk about the main recording rig that I use for my debut EP. I'm gonna run the full specs of it, the computer itself, the software that I use, the hardware that I use. I'm going to enumerate them right now. So if you're interested in home recording and, and just learning how how to record your guitar or music at home as it is very valuable right now since we're all at home and just isolated then stay tuned if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel you can click it here I guess and do follow me on my social media especially Instagram since I post a lot there I share a lot of funny memes I guess <laughs> and you can interact with me a bit more there than here and you can also follow my day-to-day -day progress on the EP so please do take your time pause this video and just follow me first in, on Instagram or even just subscribe here it will mean a lot to me just a little background on my recording setup I started to have an interest in recording around 2016 and most of the stuff that I have right now is from that time period and I just kept adding and adding on it. I guess what I want to say is if you're starting out and you just want to learn how to record, don't be afraid to just use simple gear. You don't need to have all the gear that I will put here, just, just even the minimal and you'll just learn along the way. We'll talk about more of the gear that I used when I started in depth in a while but that's what I want to say if you want to start just go ahead and just use the bare bones as possible and and it's better to start now than never start at all okay I guess we can start with my guitar the guitar that I will be using on this record is my North Customs Atlas 6 I won't get into details about the guitar anymore because I've already addressed it in another video so you can check out the vid the review of it and the story behind it uh, I'll link it down below. <laughs> Basically, the guitar is tuned in drop C, and I'm using the Adario 11 to 56 NYXL strings. Um, you can't get that in the Philippines easily, so every time I have a friend who goes abroad, I will always ask them to bring me home some of it, or when I'm going for a trip as well, I'll, I'll, I make sure I, I buy at least three to five. Next on the signal chain would be my cables. Um, I think I use generic cables that I bought, or I think they are, they are Hosa cables, I'm not really sure. But it was bought around 2008 or 2009. My parents bought them when I was 14 years old. And it's because I went out with them to go to the mall when I was suspended from school. So talk about sportive, right? I've used those cables in live gigs and everywhere else. And I think it's still decent up to now. So why change it? Next on the rig is my Fractal Audio AX8. I bought this in 2018. And the reason why I bought an AX8 instead of an Axe FX2 XL is because I want to use it in a live situation someday. <laughs> I guess someday. And I'm not really too crazy about setting up crazy effects and multiple amp setup, so this one works for me. Before I had my AX8, I only use software amps. Don't be discouraged in recording if you don't have an expensive modeler. You can use the software amps. They are amazing in this point in time. Um, you can try the Neural DSP plugins. I think they sound amazing already. And they, they, they have a 14-day trial, so you can just go ahead and try all of their amps first before buying. In terms of guitar tones, I guess all of my tones come from the AX8. I don't have a lot of pedals. Sometimes I use the Horizon Devices Precision Drive in front of it, but since I bought this AX8, I sold a lot of my pedals already. Yeah, so most of the tone comes from the Fractal already. Next would be the interface. I'm using a Focusrite 2i4, the first gen. This is the first gear that I bought when I'm starting to dive into recording, and it still works amazing now so I can't recommend this enough the focus right gear are very sturdy and the build quality is just great so I'm still using it right now I probably am gonna use it still until it breaks <laughs> now you're wondering why I have two inputs used in my focus right to y4 it's because of my DI track on one and also the one that has the wet guitar signal and the other. I guess I'm using a pseudo DI because it also passes through the fractal because I've yet to have a DI box. But I would love to have a DI box someday. I'll invest in one. 
For monitoring, I use the Mackie CR3s as my main monitors and the Samsung SR850s when I'm mixing and I just want to get into detail when I'm mixing low-end stuff and just mixing in general. A lot of you asked about the Mackie CR3s and I would say that these are quite the bang for the buck because for their price, it really sounds good and it sounds fairly balanced but I wouldn't trust mixing completely in them. I use the Mackie CR3s primarily when I'm tracking because using headphones makes me <laughs> make, makes me tired quickly. Now I know the Mackie CR3s and the Samsung SR850s are entry level, but if you're just going to get your feet wet into recording, I suggest them. I highly recommend them and if you have a bigger budget, then look to invest because that's what I'm going to do when I get a bigger budget from this. <laughs> Next up would be my MIDI keyboard. I'm using an M Audio Oxygen 25. To be honest, I don't use it a lot because I find programming still faster when I use the mouse. But I'd love to learn more or I love to learn how to play piano a bit more because I love trying synth patches with it. So I hope I'll learn more to piano theory, I guess. <laughs> then the next part of the rig is my computer or my main personal computer which is basically my gaming rig converted to a recording rig. Um, I'll put the specs around here for the, just for the curious but the main theme of my build was basically razor green so it's more of the black and green aesthetic that's why I kind of went through for the Maki CR3s as well just for the aesthetic from for now. But yeah, it's just my main gaming rig. I, I didn't really think about recording when I when I built this. I guess we can also include this, the seat that I'm using. I'm using a Panther Nightfall series gaming chair in black. It's a good budget chair. I think it's just $100 and for around 5,000 pesos. And it's very comfortable even if you're not gaming anymore like me. Well, as much like me. Well, you can see I'm, I'm trying to play a game again. <laughs> and that's it for the hardware side. So we can go now to the software side. Um, I use Windows 10 as my primary OS because it's a PC. <laughs> and I use Reaper for recording and mixing. For the drums that I use, I use Get Good Drums. I purchased the original Matt Halpern signature pack when I was starting out. And now I've been using the Matt Halpern P4 kit. Back then, I was using Easy Drummer. And I'd say a lot of my mix this got better when I use a different, well, better samples because easy drummers are just for, I guess, writing. But I believe for the EP, I'm still going to use the original Matt Halpern pack because I like the sound of it better and the songs are based from that kit, so might as well use it. For bass software, I was using Loki Bass, Solemn Tones Loki Bass for the most time. But last year, I bought the Submission Audio Eurobass 2. And it's funny because at that time, I was, I was thinking, man, if they just release a software base that is based on a Dingwall, a Dingwall, at least an NG2, that would be amazing. And like weeks later, they come out with the Gin base, and I love it. Um, ever since I bought it, when the week that it came out, I bought it already, and since then I've been using it. I believe the submission audio samples are just a bit better, and the DI sounds very, very good for post-processing. But what do I know? I'm just a random bedroom producer. <laughs> for the bass tone that I process after the DI from the Gin bass, I use Neural DSP's Parallax for that. Um, I love it because it's just intuitive and just a simple and swift workflow. And I'm all about that. And lately, I'm using the GGD Studio Cabs Zilla Edition. It's a cab simulator. And basically, I just turn off the cab section on the AX8 so I can use it. And I have the flexibility of of changing cabinets even in the mixing process so that's been a very helpful tool for me hmm. let's see what's a, what are, what are the other software that I have I think that that's that's most of it um, I use stock plugins for a lot I guess a tip that I would give is don't forget to take advantage of the free software or plugins that your gear provides for example when I have a zoom g3x before it has a Cubase LEDAW, which means Digital Audio Workstation. You use that for recording and for mixing, much like Reaper. And also, I took advantage of the free software with that comes from the Focusrite 2 i4. Um, there has been a suite of plugins, and I think they have a free plugin every month. And most especially the M Audio free software as well. My MIDI keyboard has free synth plugins, and 
I heavily use the Expand L plugin that comes with it. So again, um, don't forget to take advantage of those free plugins and learn from them because plugins can be expensive and you just have to make sure that you have a purpose before you buy it and don't just buy because it's the trend of anything. And that's it for my recording rig 2020. Um, this will be the main rig that I will use to record for my upcoming EP. I hope you're excited for that. <laughs> I'd also like to know what are your recording rig setup as well right now. You can put the specs below. And if you have questions for me for, for a future video so we can expound on a particular part of my setup, feel free to write them down below as well. I love reading your comments even if there's just a few of them, so please do. And let's see as well if this changes uh, for next year. So I hope I get to upgrade some of it. <laughs> Thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Please share this to your friends. If anyone's intrigued in recording or you want them to learn how to record their music and share to the world please do share this video please if you're watching please subscribe it would mean a lot to me and don't forget to follow me on ig at mikosis and also please consider supporting me in my patreon page budget is very tight right now and <laughs> i hope if you're interested in supporting me in simple ways please do consider that so i guess that's it my name is miko thank you so much for watching the video again and i'll see you on the next one bye